In this video, we will study about a pre-Socratic philosopher named Democritus. We will discuss his theory of materialism and logical atomism and also discuss some of the branches of philosophy he has written about. So Democritus is taken from the Greek word Demokritos which basically means chosen of the people. Democritus was an ancient Greek pre-Socratic philosopher primarily remembered today for his formulation of an atomic theory of the universe. As a result, he is regarded to be the father of modern science. Unfortunately, none of his writings have survived, only fragments are known from the vast body of work to us today. So Democritus has extended this philosophy of theory of atoms and void to different branches of philosophy such as epistemology, aesthetics, ethics and metaphysics. We will study them shortly. Democritus, like Plato and Socrates, was critical towards sophists and their teachings. Rejecting sophists and their teachings, Democritus expounded that knowledge is possible, knowledge of ethics is also possible and they are not relative in nature. Therefore, Democritus Try to explain knowledge scientifically and absolute morality with the help of mechanism and materialism. So Democritus was a materialist. What is materialism? Materialism is a philosophical thinking or belief according to which matter is the sole reality. In simpler words, it says that nothing except matter exists. According to Democritus, everything is composed of matters Atoms are infinite in number and differ in shape and size. They are physically indivisible and are also imperishable. As a result, they always have been and they always will be in motion. Hence, he along with his master, Leucippus, propounded the theory of logical atomism. Now, according to logical atomism, nature consists of two fundamental components. They are Atoms and void. Atoms are of different shapes and sizes. They are indestructible in nature and are surrounded by a void where they come together or collide with each other and form clusters. Clusters of different shapes and arrangements give rise to various macroscopic organisms in this world. So what we are trying to say is that we are nothing but a group of atoms or a cluster of atoms which is possible when a group or a number of atoms come and collide with each other. The result of that collision is the things that we see around us including us. Therefore, Democritus believed that everything or all matter is composed of small indivisible particles called atoms or cluster of atoms. So from this we can conclude that Atoms or void are said to be the only two things that really exist and everything else is not real in nature. Now moving towards his epistemology or theory of knowledge, Democritus makes a sharp distinction between perception and rational thought. He believed that the two, that is perception and rational thought, do not differ in kind but only in degree, yet they are sharp distinctions between perception and thought. For him, perception gives us the knowledge or the information of the world, that is the sensible world or the world of becoming. On the other hand is the thought. Now rational thought gives us the knowledge of the being. He accepts that knowledge given by the sense perception, that is perception from all the five external senses like eyes, nose, ears, tongue and touch, is relative or transitory in nature. For example, let's say honey. Now we would usually say that honey is sweet in taste, but that sweetness is known only to a healthy person. On the other hand, if we ask a person who is ill or is down with a fever and his taste buds have gone haywire, he would say that he cannot really, you know, feel it that sweet in nature. So it is subjective again. Now giving another example, let's say a person is suffering from jaundice. So a person who is suffering from jaundice would see 
a yellowish tint of color in everything around him that is the walls the curtains etc everything would seem yellow to him but the same walls the same curtains the same furniture would not seem so yellowish in color to a healthy person the same views have been also expressed by the sophists according to the sophists perception deals with knowledge which is subjective or relative in nature it changes from one person to another due to this sophists reject the possibility of scientific knowledge and as we have seen or already discussed democritus was against this theory which was propounded by sophists that knowledge is subjective in nature now on the other hand we have democritus who says that thought is permanent it gives us universal and objectively valid knowledge so by upholding thought over senses democritus expounds the possibility of scientific knowledge and defends science against the epistemological speciesism and nihilism of sophists expounded by protagoras and georgius so on your screens right now you would see two colors that is yellow and red yellow deals with all things related to perception that is perception is subjective in nature it is temporary it changes it deals with particular knowledge on the other hand is the rational thinking that rational thinking is objective it is permanent it is universal it is fixed doesn't change and this idea is what is expounded by democritus now after having studied epistemology we'll shift to ethics and aesthetics Democritus wrote a number of literary works especially some poems on art beauty etc unfortunately none of them remain western philosophers and scholars of greek philosophy have claimed that democritus established aesthetics as a branch of philosophy in western tradition for study investigation and research purposes so from this we can fathom that how important a person democritus was for the branch of philosophy that is aesthetics which was hardly recognized before him and it is only through his works such as on poetry on the beauty of verses on rhythm and harmony on songs etc that aesthetics got established as a separate branch of philosophy now as we have already discussed Democritus believed that everything is made up of atoms so soul is nothing but an aggregate of fiery atoms now where does this fiery atom come in fiery is the word which is used by democritus because according to him atoms have the essence of fire these fiery atoms are the finest smoothest most mobile and are distributed throughout the universe they are found to be present in animals plants human beings and other things but he says these fiery items are found to be in the largest numbers in men so democritus believes that true happiness results from the gentle movement of these very fiery atoms within us according to him true happiness is not associated with luxury wealth or bodily pleasure rather he says true happiness results from the cultivation of true friendship he avers true friendship provides peace and guards the soul from all sorts of emotional turbulences as a result it yields mastery over passion by a true knowledge or rational thought now after having studied the definition of true happiness which is believed to be true by democritus we can draw a comparison and think that the ethical theory expounded by democritus shares a similarity with the ethical teachings of bhagavad gita bhagavad gita itself has an elaborate chapter on the concept of friendship steadfastness and tranquility of the soul which is possible by the means of knowledge and keeping the soul away from passions desires bodily pleasures material welfare etc so you can draw a comparison between the two when it comes to the definition of true happiness question according to democritus the nature of atoms is the correct answer is the nature of atoms is they are physically indivisible and are imperishable now it is important to note here that they are although physically indivisible they are geometrically divisible 
Everything around us, even we, are composed of atoms. Therefore, atoms are always in motion and have the essence of fire, that is, there are fiery atoms present in us.